like every good story, there comes a day when you reach the final chapter. And Salona Beach has made it to their final chapter. The sponges will always hold a special place in my heart. From a winless inaugural season to back-to-back -back national championships, there was a special moment to be taken away from each and every game that contributed to our 72 and 34 record. The very first win, the battle for the beaches, our first bowl game victory, an iconic rock Boston touchdown pass, landing our first five-star recruit, bringing home the city of San Diego a national championship they deserve, and of course, soaking up every big Big game along the way. What a ride it has been. The downside is that for NCAA 14, the story comes to a close. For college football 25, it's just getting started. But for right now, the sponges have more football to play and the conclusion is yet to be written. So let's kick off some bonus football jam packed right here in this one episode. Kick back, relax, the last two seasons of Salona Beach football all in this one grand finale. After conquering Ohio in the national championship, we signed another number one class in the nation. The crazy part is not one of them will be starting the season besides Gabe Robinson, the freshman kicker. Safe to say we got some depth up in here. Squared away in our second year here in the Big 12, look at all the five stars and four stars that want a piece of this. Young guys like CJ Smith from Brighton, Colorado, the safety 82 overall gym, want to be mentored by stars of today's college football landscape here in Salona Beach. It's just one of those cases where it feels like the rich keep getting richer. Preseason number one, rightfully so, after back-to-back -back championships, we got an A-plus overall, A-plus offense, A-plus defense. Doesn't look like I can sort, but I don't think anyone else is an A-plus. All right, just kidding. It looks like LSU got the rating too. Real question is, how is Texas 36th in the preseason poll with a solid A? Preseason All-Americans up in here, Zach Miller, Zach Landry, the Zach to Zach that connection, man, it's stone cold and it's a first team All-American bid. Add Tim Hawley, Adrian Young, and Gabe White, three more first teamers. And there may be just one second team All-American, but his presence can't be denied. It is stone, the bone, cold Boston. Here is overwhelming evidence. When you get to this point in a dynasty rebuild, you can rest easy. We have a outlook of being a championship contender, number one for the next four years. Salona Beach is truly a magical place when you got guys like Justin Muhammad, six foot four defensive tackle, four star, 79 overall gem committing to us in week one. And check it out, what other college football team is quite built like this? I don't care what era, what decade, the Salona Beach sponges are goaded 99 across the board it's really just more bleeding for the bobcats i mean we're just creating wounds that are unhealable not only do they have the pain of losing the national championship they have to kick off the new season in salona beach to come on down to san diego just to feel it all over again and as you can tell zach miller yes he did not leave for the nfl he came back for his senior season and i don't think he's leaving until he gets the heisman all up on him reminiscent right now of the championship game they're just not able to stop us whatsoever and i hate to be that guy but i'm gonna be that guy i don't know who is gonna stop us with 99s all over the place. I mean, look at Stone Boston just run away from every defender, just making it look easy out here. And look at that, the 95th passing touchdown of his career breaks his own record, of course. But uh, he'll be way over 100 when it's all said and done. Well, shoot, I'll be darned. They come out and try to punch us in the mouth. Bobcat offense is rolling and they got all the way that far for all that. And Jamie Stone was stone cold here, denying the red zone request. Just ruthless, man. I'm telling you, scheduling the Bobcats to take a victory lap. That is a declaration point. And we have, in fact, made it to the point in time where it's Wiggins backfield all alone. He has Anderson backing him up, but that's the first time in a while there's been no scope or no Brent Burrell. Defense back on their toes, and Ohio is moving it down. Still led by Heisman candidate running back Chris Brandt, who was there running 2,000 yards last Last year. Efficient work by this unit after our blunder. Anderson just takes it in. 7-7 ball game, not looking to make the same mistake, so just going to take the easy handoff there and get the first. Yet to call some guys' names today like Landry, but there he is. Donning the number one on his jersey. He was number one, and Zach Miller was number two. Touchdown. Love me a good physical run just like that bobcat defenders whiffing it's actually a scary feeling kind of like thanos with the glove i mean we don't 
don't have a hole anywhere on any side of the ball. And yes, I'm aware that was probably some bad timing to call that out. But I mean, check out the dogs. After we give up one bad play, we'll make it up with three good ones. Wow, I've really underestimated this Brant guy. He's a good running back who's been carrying him down the field. So it becomes up to us right here, right now to make a stand. And thank goodness for the Butterfingers. Keeping the Bobcats in this one much closer than we liked to. They're about to score. And score, we will not allow it. We allow it. Four verts, like I say, no one gets out of here scot-free. You're gonna get soaked. 16 seconds is literally all the time I need to cook, and unless I'm under throwing balls, like Miller, why are we doing that again? Red zone action here, second half football. Tony Wiggins cutting this one to the tent. They just got some burst to him, and so let's plunge it up the middle. He's got it. Defense trying to solve the problem here at running back, and man, we got bigger problems with Dawson right now. Playing some cover four here on the third and 12, just trying to keep everything in front of us, and didn't happen. I hardly like calling those soft coverages because it never gives us time to blitz the quarterback. Big third down right here, not trying to give up any points whatsoever. Reese all over that lockdown defense. If you told me I'd only be up by one point against Ohio a few years ago i'd be laughing but no these new look bobcats are the real deal i am impressed by what i see just like i'm impressed by zach miller in his burst this year is a new him and he just broke the single game rushing record it goes to show our best rusher was only 114 yards before that bobcats in danger it's the two minute drill can they muster anything together fourth and nine looming time to step it up here on defense the slip screen that's not gonna work buddy salona beach officially soaks it up on that one game over put your hands together for the salona beach sponges you're defending national champs defend their honor here at home a pretty evenly split passing and rushing game from the quarterback today it is going to be a fun year battle of the beaches it's west coast versus east coast coastal carolina the chanticleers going up against the salona beach sponges this rivalry was a little bit more back and forth in the beginning but as you may know over the last handful of years it's pretty much been a stalemate for Coastal. They haven't been able to make any progress. Not gonna lie, it feels pretty clean to get back on that teal turf for another time. Love our trips to Coastal just for the fact that the teal field is insane. Simmons is insane, picks us off. But hey, when you throw a 99 overall defense at all your problems, you're in good hands. Fourth down, ball back to us. And yeah, well, we're forced to rely on this 99 overall defense yet again. And look who's there, Adrian Young, preseason All-American. Zach attack, throwing another interception. He is making poor decisions during this rivalry game right now. My guy has got to calm down. He must still be feeling the jet lag. Finally shaking off some of the rust there. That was a awful first quarter. Got to slow down there when we're taking on Coastal in a rivalry game. Can't take anything for granted. One of the only true freshmen on this roster. Touchdown, Jeremy Rogers from Oakland, California. Roger Roger. Isn't it beautiful? We're in year nine of the rebuild and we're still out here making magical moments like we're at Disneyland. We're in the business of making stars and that is exactly what we've been doing the last handful of years. Everyone on this team I feel like it could go play on Sundays. Yep, you see that right. 271 yards to Coastal's 15. Um, I hate to do it to them, but we gotta do it to them. It's just the nature of the biz. Especially in the Battle of the Beaches, it's eat or be eaten. If I'm not doing it to you, who will? Dwayne Cade, senior season. He's having a fast start. And one thing has led to another. We're back over midfield, and we're pushing for more. Scrambling out to our right, we got that elite 90 speed on our build and Davis gets us to first and about 10. Having a dual threat with 90 plus speed is just such a cheat code in this game. Like it's almost a necessity in my opinion. Fourth and six, go for a field goal. Nah, we're gonna go for six points and it's right there. Chris Hicks, the converted tight end to fullback. He's been a heck of a player in a good sport. All right, Roger, Roger got the spotlight, the true freshman backup tight end. Let's give the kicker Gabe Robinson some time too. Cause well, more than likely this will probably be his last time in the spotlight. Third in 12, London back here in coverage. The London bridge is coming down. I don't think there's any stopping it. Just for fun. We're going to go ahead and get another touchdown. Just watch Landry 
does the rest. Thank you, sir. And you can put it on the board. It is a big win. Slohona Beach fans are just beside themselves, man, because we have owned the Battle for the Beaches for as long as I can remember, man. A lot of our targets are ready to come see us. So we hooked up all the recruits with VIP passes to watch this Jayhawk beatdown. There's a look at some of the biggest names. Tim, Muhammad, Brad, Clifford, and Lance Edwards, three five stars. It's time to show out for our guys, and it's time to show out for our city. KU comes in here, part of the Big 12, thinking they can do something to us, man. No way. Not in our house. Not a chance. Not ever three and out on your first drive. That strikes fear in the opponent's heart. I truly believe the game isn't over until it's over, but nothing speaks volumes like stopping on the first drive and then scoring right back. So it's time to test the Jayhawk defense, see what they're made of, and they weren't ready for Landry. Jayhawks are one and one in the season thus far, and it's about to become one and two quickly. Everyone on this team just playing at the utmost highest level and trust. Read options are dangerous when Zach Miller's keeping it. As we've seen what's happened, in week one. Nothing's ever a sure thing, but Zach Miller is as close as it gets in the football realm. Trust me, if he's not a round one pick one in the NFL draft, I don't know what teams are doing. It really was just domination from top to bottom as Cade gives us the big six. Opening drive, touchdown. What's new? I don't know, man. What's new is a school receiving touchdown record, Dwayne Cade. And as this defense usually plays, the dogs came out today. Let's keep it moving, folks. Off the back foot, it's playing tennis out here or a uh, relatively easier sport. Not sure why tennis was the first thing out of my mouth because uh, tennis actually is not that easy. And I also, I don't know what I was trying to say. I was just trying to make it seem like Zach Miller really is under no duress whatsoever, but maybe he needs to... Uh, pick up the anticipation a little bit and not throw picks. I believe in forgiveness and second chances, and it's really easy to me when Zach Miller can respond to Stone, Cold, Boston. Just looking for a little bit more points before halftime, I think we can manage. When in doubt, just go to the wide open streaking receiver, Dwayne Cade, touchdown. Oh my goodness, I can, I'm just... I can't even fathom some of the obscene numbers we're going to see at the end of the year in the stat line. Newsflash, I have a feeling every game the rest of this year is going to be like that. We did schedule some of the toughest opponents here in a couple weeks. That's right. I brought in the powerhouse Nebraska Cornhuskers. They'll be visiting us here in just a couple weeks as Miller finishes it with a cherry on top. First time all day, I felt slightly threatened by the Jayhawks. They cash in and get a touchdown. Congratulations. Because all of your striving was in vain today, except for that sack. They got me there, fourth and 24. And as any sane person would, looking for a different result, we're going to call the same play again. That's right. We expect something different to happen. And off the back foot, Stone Boston. Oh my goodness. It worked out like uh, we wanted it to. Inches away, I'm hurrying up to the line. I'm force feeding this to Stone Cold Boston. I don't care, make me do something different because I'm not. And there we go, it's time to hit the beach. We got the win, all the fans can start making their way to the exit. This sold out crowd is gonna go catch a wave right after this big dub. Hey yo, CJ Smith, Tim Muhammad, Lance Edwards, Travis McCullough, who Dan Sullivan, Mark Taylor, Ross Moore, you guys are all coming to Salona Beach. I'm telling you, over here at Salona Beach, we have a really aggressive recruiting strategy. We bring them in early, wine and dine them, and say, hey, we need you to make up your mind within the next week because we only take certified winners here. It's a sign of the times for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. They got spanked, as you see here. They got exposed 41 to 17 to Northwestern. So a look at the polls would show you that Cal is on the move up. We can send Nebraska in a spiral once we get our hands on them here. But low key, I'm kind of impressed. 95 offense, 92 defense. It's a solid Nebraska rebuild. Who's ready to rumble? I'm ready to rumble. That's right, corn huskers, sponges. It's go time here in Salona Beach. Philip Rivers talking to his quarterback, Zach Miller, saying, Watch out for that left outside linebacker. He's a 94 overall. Absorbent field, man. Home of some fond memories. I'm sure gonna miss it. How about you? As we kick off here against the corn huskers, I want you to go down in the comment section and let me know what your favorite Salona Beach memory has been in the series throughout the nine seasons. I'm not going to lie. One that sticks out to me right away is the onside kick recovery for a touchdown by good old Brian Williams. Anyways, we're going to come out here and look to get the first down stone cold Boston sure hands. Seriously though, hearing team builder announced to come back in the next game, like literally made my day, made my week because not only can we keep the Salona Beach dream alive if we so please, 
we're not going to for starting off in the new game. We're bringing a brand new dynasty. That's right. You've heard it here first. There will be a new kid on the block in it. Man, they got some swag and storyline. Let me tell you. Can't say much more, but you're not going to want to miss it. At midfield, at the iconic sponge logo going across to Landry. We have built this house on memories and we're trying to make one more here. Northwestern already spoiled them, but I'm looking to be the reason they spiral. On fourth and 11, calling up a ball go for it play here i'm gonna just lob it up to a wide open Dwayne cade and just like that i think we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves a broken play touchdown got it done the first time how about another time running into a wall nebraska actually gets the stop looking to hold fast here against nebraska's offense they are driving right on down the field and that was Kenyon johnson one of their top receiving options out there number 11 he's a 97 overall he is a difference maker for the corner Huskers, but so is the defensive line. Chad Slasher bringing him down. They're dealing with a case of missed field goals. That is always a unfortunate situation to be in. Two minute drill in need of some points. Just going to take the easy one here to Joe Davis. First down, keep the chains moving. Keeping it on the ground. It's the QB's turn to make a move. So I'm seeing the Nebraska defense do a good job here defending the run early in this one. So we'll go ahead and look and see if there are any holes here in the passing game is what we can start to pick apart. Red zone football, Salona Beach style, Tony Wiggins, keep your footing. Right on into the first and goal to go. I feel like it's time for us to cash in Dwayne Cade, the star receiver of the show. Doing a solid job winding down the clock in this one. Going to Roger. Meet Roger. That is the true fresh. And just like that, that's right, another first down. Joe Davis plucked it out of the air and he's going to also finish. Touchdown, Joe Davis. Let's go 86. If Northwestern did the exposing, we're doing the burying out here as we're just rubbing it in. Make that 28 zip. When it gets this ugly, sometimes you start to feel a little bad for your opponent. Backups in, David Hull at the helm, just trying to ice the clock and run right through for the game ceiling first down. There it is, another victory to add to the repertoire from one ranked opponent to the next it's the baylor bears sixth ranked we're headed to texas bears got to do a lot in this one they're four and on the young season but they're gonna have to pull out every stop in the book opening look here against the bears the pressure is just swarming shout out to the lime and lavender that came to travel and watch their team play today like that is some commitment and man that is a poorly committed ball interception. Not exactly the opening drive we had in mind as McIntosh is going to take it himself first in goal. Wow. Two plays and a touchdown. Looks like we're going to need our A game for sure in this one as Wiggins with the move. Just past midfield. Uh, Landry, we had him and we got to it a bit late. That brings up this big play right here. Looking to connect. We do. Now we'll call the play action. See if Stone Boston gets open and that he does. Looking to cap it off. A quick little dump to Stone. He's holding on. That man is so reliable. I don't want to jinx anything, but he really doesn't have rock hands. He has glue all over them stones. Now it's all tied up. We're really poised here for a big fight. I intentionally scheduled some of our hardest matchups in the early slate. Figured if we can get through these guys and any one in the early slate will have a clean second half coast to the championship game once more started off on rough footing but we have responded right now in a big way up by a touchdown let's send in a blitz and disrupt anything they had going there no sorry with a two minute drill in effect we can go and cook in landry wants to kick it off in a major way. When you sell out like that on the defense, you're gonna get burnt by our big time weapons on offense. Let's go ahead and find someone to dot up real fast. I don't see anyone at the initial glance here. Miller just looking to keep it himself in what in the ragdoll physics was that? Don't matter though, because Joe Davis says, I gotcha. Our boy Joe Davis getting us right here. And then Stone Cold Boston is already at three touchdowns in the first half. Heck, with five seconds left, anything can happen here on this last Hail Mary play. So why not try it out? And it did work to perfection. Zach Landry hauls it in as time expires in the half. Four touchdown passes for Miller today just threw up a prayer and it was answered. We really out here like the all-time Alabama team or something because no one can stop us. We're up 34 to seven. It's against the sixth team in the nation. There's us and then everyone else. I think we're on a whole nother planet on our own level, our own tier. 
you can't compare to Salona Beach. I know everyone's got their favorite college football team and everything, but I'm going to say it. We are the best college football team in Dynasty out there. Show me another team out there that absolutely obliterates top ranked teams. And may I add on a consistent basis. Well, that puts Baylor at a really, really risky spot here going up against their own end zone. It could be a safety zone. And trust me, you best believe I am prepped for it as Adrian Jung just seals the dang deal. I'm gonna call a read option here. Zach Miller, little spin cycle and shoves a man down. Still going. Looking for some final whipped cream and cherries. It's a touchdown from Land offside on the defense it's seriously just too easy right now Baylor fans headed home in utter disappointment it's a 50 to 10 final Solana Beach is the victor I am not surprised racking them up one by one watching them fall down Arizona State's next in line forks up or forks down in this one time will tell it's almost time for kickoff as tradition we'll take the opening kickoff because we like to pound the stone right down any opponent's throat getting on the board early. It is a toasty one out here in Arizona. We're gonna need to really dial in because we gotta stay hydrated, soaking up every opportunity, making sure enough moisture is flowing through our sponge. Gonna lob this one up to the big old stone, Boston, and this time he drops it. Man, is the heat getting to him already? Because he was sure-handed throughout this whole year so far. I guess I can let it go because the mistakes happen on occasion, no denying that. And Dwayne Cade says anyone in my way is a mistake because we'll get right through you. The Big 12 expansion is gonna be interesting to watch play out in the regular season this upcoming fall. As Stone Boston says, well, I'll show you a little sneak peek. Arizona State is not gonna be all that great. We're gonna shred right through that secondary. Third and four, just going for a simple pass play there. It was blanketed like no other. There was no separation. Marching right back down the field, you can get a sense of where this one is headed early as Miller does the rest. How do you do? with the moves, man. He's got the moves like Jagger. Arizona State wants to keep things interesting here. They can't get the first down, so at least try to settle for three. So far, it has been the same story, same results in this one until Arizona State defense steps up for a big sack. And wow, okay, they're starting to feel themselves here just a little bit as they get the stop on defense, bring it down here on offense. This time, they're not comfortable going for three points. They want it all, and they do get the first down. This is where the rubber beats the road. Can they convert on this big play? And holy moly, how did Henry just burn our DB like that? Never fear, Zach Miller is here after all, and he's back with a vengeance touchdown. With a nose for the end zone, we are back and in a big way looking for that six. So on first and goal, we're gonna stretch it to the right. Tony Wiggins, it's a walk-in touchdown. And on this play right here, I believe this is where the game is over. Same place, same play, same result. To the right, Wiggins walking it in. You're not dreaming, it's another blowout. If you didn't believe me, here is more proof. Eli getting in on the action too. Still don't believe me? Well, fine. How about this? Is that enough proof? Touchdown Avery from David Hall. Really? You're not astounded by what you see? How about now? Touchdown Zach Landry from David Hall. Gotta let the backup defense eat too, so catch these reps from our second stringers. Even they had no problem closing out this game. Coach Phillip Rivers, man, got his guys on a roll. Coach Prime had a hard time finding words to inspire his boys before this game as Colorado is headed into Salona Beach. Sco sponge, and let's get this thing cooking up in here. See you on the sidelines getting their warmups in. Phillip Rivers got the guys amped and ready to go. A little peek at the Big 12. CU is right behind us at three and three overall. They're three and one in conference play. Another sold out crowd for like the third year in a row. This has been a blown out San Diego scene. No one's going to the beach during these games. It's really been a cultural phenomenon. And yes, I'm not gassing it up. This is like the first time in San Diego cultural history that people prefer to go to a football game over the beach. Trust me, wait until it's studied in the history books. It's gonna be a scene in sight and an experience like no other. Cause you could do anything here on your sunny, warm weekend, yet you choose to tune in to Salona Beach Football. That's love there and we love to give 
give back to our city. And I'm gonna go ahead and start the giving with a big touchdown. That's my initial thought. Joe Davis, way to start off the fun. Colorado has their offense here past midfield, looking for something short and sweet, and Thomas pushes and gets that extra cushion. Let's see if those hard-earned yards come to help, and nope, it really did not. Playing true to our 99 overall, it has been a load of fun. The first half of the season has been textbook, gone according to the plan and some. I'm starting to see why Zach Miller decided to come back to college. He wanted to play with this roster and put up a Heisman season. And honestly, I don't blame you. You only get to experience college once. You got your whole professional career ahead of you. Point being, he had a chance to come back and soak it up with his boys, and he did just that. Here we go. Dwayne Cade wide open. Wow, that's not a touchdown. I want a second look at that. I haven't won many of these, but when I see something that close and we're already up this big, what really little difference does it make? And that's, ah, uh, okay, I see why. It's cool, I guess. We'll just go down to Williams and get into the first and goal range. Zach attack once again on the ground, cutting in and out, left and right. CU's already gonna need one of the greatest comebacks of all time if they want a chance in this game. And if you wanna start the comeback, just PS for starters, you should probably hit your field goals. I don't know, that's just my two cents. Their loss is our gain because now we have 14 seconds to just get down the field, get some points out of it. And it looks like that's not gonna happen. We run out of time. Oh well though, it can't be mad. 28 zip. And as expected, bada bing, bada boom. It's 42 to 10. Eli Anderson and company is about icing this one out. We really have a knack for taking people out of the game and not even giving them a chance. The show must go on. 7 and 0. See you's out of here. Salona Beach is just continuing this onslaught. This time Salona Beach is headed down to Houston, Texas. Truly up to something special this year at 7 and 0. Check it out. The number 1 ranked offense and number 1 ranked defense. Truly a gorgeous sight, you know. It's something you don't see every day. Salona Beach looking to keep riding high. Momentum is on their side in Houston. As per usual, we'll receive the kickoff and go down this field and score points. I don't know if there's been one drive this whole season. We haven't done that yet. Heisman posters are out and about all across campus here in Salona Beach because uh, Zach Miller, number two, hence the Heisman with a two, is on a rampage for Salona Beach's all-time passer it's really just a bunch of child's play out here and on fourth down nothing's too big for him as he's just gonna go for it all and on this case I guess the opportunity was too big Houston looking to capitalize here on the opening drive and it's gonna stop short fourth and three two and five they want to get their third win let's go ahead and hit that read option open up the game in so many ways we're gonna call up a deep curl and that'll work with Joe Davis on the other receiving end we'll Go ahead and hit the play action. Find our man Stone, Bone, Cold, Boston. Get that man an ice cold drink on the sidelines because he is having a season and career passing up teammate Dwayne Cade for all-time touchdowns. Back into the red zone, Tony Wiggins plunging forward, falling for the first. Fitting spot to run the read option. It's Wiggins time running that defender over. Before the second quarter is up, I have to find a way to get some more points. Going all the way across and completing it, we finished the mega play. 20 seconds, that's all that went off the clock. We have yet another opportunity to score. MVP. MVP little dump off to Wiggins. I am once again to reiterate on the hardest difficulty, hardest sliders, realistic sliders, and yet it's still like a cake. The rebuild has been complete for some time. We're seriously just on a victory lap. Fourth 10 looming, no sweat whatsoever. Just gonna let it fly to Joe Davis burning a star cornerback. And dude, I don't think there's anyone on this Cougar defense that can hang with any of our guys, and I mean it. This has been pretty commonplace to see right now in the fourth quarter, David Hall leading the backups. This is his team going forward starting next season, and he's found Kenny Bowling for the quick one, two, punch, and six. Don't threaten these guys with a good time because when they get their chance, they're not missing. It's a touchdown for Eli Anderson. That one is for the books. Eight consecutive wins, a 50 
four, two, three, blow out. Zach Miller, again, putting up Heisman-like numbers. For those interested in the recruiting landscape, we got Phil Smiley and Lorenzo Moss, two more commits. Heading home to sweet old Salona Beach, Cincinnati wants to give us a test. Bearcats want to play spoiler on the perfect season. Salona Beach in beautiful San Diego, not looking for that to happen. If I were a betting man, however, I would put the money on Salona Beach. We have not been stopped nor really contested one time this year i'm not gonna lie these drippy fits are probably one of my favorites i have on the roster i mean check those out man that's cool and that's my next question to you all in the comment section you already gave me your favorite play or favorite moment in salona beach history now i want to hear your favorite jersey combination let me know what was the favorite helmet jersey collar pant collar and then obviously right cursive or the main logo i'm interested to hear second and four Landry with a little zig, he'll just get the completion needed. So third and 30, man, we just got to send one up and see if anyone comes down with it. Yeah, Cade, not going to do it there. That's right. Your eyes are not deceiving you. It's fourth and 30. Phillip Rivers is the most aggressive play caller in the league, and he's just going to have to chuck one up. And yeah, that is at its core, the downside of going for it. But Coach Phillip Rivers' philosophy when he goes for it on fourth down is one thing and one thing only. It's faith in the defense. Couldn't stop the first down from happening, the last one, but there's a good chance it will not happen again in the same drive. And as you can tell, the faith and trust paid off immensely. Got the ball and we got the positioning we needed to be right here outside the red zone. Heisman campaign continues with a strike to Blake Williams. Touchdown. We are up with first blood in this one. Right back at midfield. Another chance on deck here as Miller just kicks it out. Fourth and four past midfield. Much more reasonable than a fourth and 30. Am I right? A little play action clear out is what this one's called. And the only thing getting cleared out there is Zach Miller. He's getting punished. Looking for a little redemption after that unfortunate mishap. Boston comes through like he does. Stone Boston honestly is going to go down as one of the greatest tight ends in school history as Joe. So Davis is in the end zone. Third and 12. It's about that time when the defense has got a two touchdown cushion. They really just put it in coast. I want my halftime points and I know I'm going to get it one way or another. I will find my way. Just a minute left. Got so many options, almost too many options. And yeah, I just float one up into danger. But it's cool. Zach Miller learned he can't always be that sloppy and get away with it. So he's just going to throw <laughs> another wobbler. With the shutout looming and the boys coasting, we decided to go the backup route early in this one. Seeing a couple new faces out here, like number 11, Rivera hauling that one in. We don't get to call his name very often. I know that's right. And here at first in goal, we'll just hit Rogers, the freshman tight end, does the rest. Backup defense, just holding on here to whatever last little gasp that this Cincinnati offense is trying to do. And on fourth and nine, this is the last play of the game it's a handoff draw turnover shutout complete thank you very much salona beach man i like this is our best season hands down i know we've literally won two national championships before this but there is no stopping this team keeping the campaign at home going against texas tech next six and oh in the big 12 this season fun fact for y'all we haven't lost in big 12 play since coming over from the mountain west that is unheard of. All right, so first request I had was to comment your favorite memory in Salona Beach history. Second request was your favorite jersey combination. What drip was the most heat? And now I got one more for y'all. Since we've played just about a decade when this thing is all said and done, think of your favorite all-time decade teams. Where does Salona Beach land on the list? Are they your number one? Or not quite? Does someone have them beat? Because I know this run is going down in the books. I just want to know how far it falls on your list. And stick around because you already know I'm going to try to recreate Rock Boston's elite touchdown with Stone Boston at some point in the season. One thing has left led to another it's a terror out here in the first quarter the usual really for Salona Beach it seems rather often these days we go to the second stringers in the fourth quarter I feel like that's good and bad for Zach Miller's campaign for Heisman the bad part is he has less 
quarter in less time to rack up stats. But they got to take into account it's just unneeded. Like the dominance is too good that we don't need extra stats in time. We are getting into crunch time this season. Just a couple games left until it's championship weekend and we're sharp and smooth and clean as a whistle. Scoring with 13 seconds left. Improbable? Yes. Impossible? No. Take three seconds off the clock. It's T minus 10 and we got a wide open stone cold Boston. This man is a killer. Looking to put some finishing touches on it. Eli Anderson bursting through first and goal. Yeah, honestly, it's another extremely decisive outcome. Is it a surprise to anyone? That's a wrap. Zach Miller, without a doubt, player of the game again. And the dude will not come down from this high. At this point, just counting down to the playoffs, we're taking on TCU in Fort Worth. A rainy one here against the Frogs. It's a little bit chilly. It's Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, we haven't dealt with much weather elements this season yet, but hey, good test. That end zone back there is full of lime and lavender, and I just love the turnout that I see as Dwayne Cade is off to the races. They say rain and the elements will be a bigger factor in the new game, but I don't think it's going to affect a 99 overall quarterback like Zach Miller. Because when you're built different, it really doesn't matter rain or shine, and geez, we take the sack and lose our opportunity here. Maybe rain might play a slightly heavier factor than I gave it credit for initially. Slightly off there on our internal interpretation as now we're down 10-0. Didn't expect the frogs to come at it with this much oomph, but that's okay. We'll bounce back. Ball this close to the end zone, really, we probably should just run it, but I'm just going to dump it to Anderson. Mistake. It's plays like that where Zach Miller was prioritizing the Heisman campaign over the win because he wants passing touchdowns. Defense tightening up here, just trying to use the rain and any element we can to our advantage. It's a little dumbfounding how they're getting like absolutely all the time in the world. No pressure on any of them. Not about to let the horn frog spoil our season. As the rain continues to trickle down here on the field, Stone Boston still sure handed. Just going to get ourselves a quick fumble ruski here. And we had a wide open slants. However, when we line up to the line our o-line is booty that's one thing that hasn't changed over nine years of salona beach football another grand opportunity here just to chuck one up and no tcu trying to return the favor and it connects oh my gosh they caught it thankfully down short crucial fourth down here in the third quarter we connect to joe davis and we're looking to flip this game on its head anyone will do that is the man we needed joe davis coming through once more at the inches line we're just going to call a speed option and take it flick it out to anderson he's got it touchdown through the rain they are going deep and they got heron man i'm impressed these guys really decided to step it up today it is one of our first big challenges in a long while forcing third and goal what will they do with their chance just walk out of bounds so they're content with keeping their three points there and we want more cushion joe davis has really stepped up in a big way this game and now i was looking for landry and power Powell intercepts. Suddenly the frogs have three minutes to work and they're only down by five. But you snooze, you lose. They had a chance and they could not come through and we finish it off with the first down. This might get me in trouble, but I'm going to play for some Heisman stats now. I'm going for the touchdown. Dwayne Cade. And what a way to finish the job. Frogs threatened us in a big way in this one. Thankfully, we were able to soak them up in the rain, giving us that extra liquid and moisture to win. The season finale right here at home against West Virginia. Senior day for guys like Zach Miller. This is a emotional day full of of joy, jubilee, but also just some sadness from fans that'll miss their favorite player on Saturdays. A rare drive here started on defense. We have guys all across the line that are big time seniors that mean a lot to us, like Chad Slasher and Tim Hawley. Matter of fact, it might be a brand new defensive line here next season. False start pushes these guys back just a handful of yards, giving us opportunity to bring in the heat. And there comes James Reese on the play Reese's pieces. He's been making a difference lately. So it's the third down. They're just going with a handoff draw and Dodd is going to go nowhere. Quality kicker seems to be a universal problem for all kinds of teams. 
West Virginia's guy missed it. So I'm ready to capitalize on their mistake and see what we can do with it. Big third and seven, a little curl flat here to Davis. He's got it. Zach Miller on the ground, handing it to Wiggins. He's busting through. I look around and see a good amount of seniors, man, on both sides of the ball. So there are a lot of difference makers out here. Dwayne Cade over here, another one of those guys. Wow, there's so much pressure. On paper, our line is shored up. So it's a little confusing to see such relentless pressure from the defense. On senior day, true to how we play, we're going for it on fourth down, of course, and that had to be pass interference. Like, he literally held our receiver back. Like, let's see if they show it. 47's just handling him. We still got time out here to make this one special, and Landry is doing his cause. Everyone playing their part right now, and trust me, if I get enough cushion in this game, you might see Stone Boston slinging it for a minute. We successfully secured some of that cushion we were looking for. However, West Virginia is looking to get some of it back. Big second and goal opportunity there for Howell to complete. Crunch time is when we get in our element and look at Landry going up, making the contested snag a 1v1 ball. He's better. I think now's a fitting time at the goal line to pull in Stone Boston. QB extraordinaire, 40 overall. He's got speed. He's got strength. Let's see what he can do. And there he is, QB extraordinaire with an arm brace. That's right. He is decked out, ready to go, lobbing one up, and not going to connect. I think when in doubt, we can scramble. Stone Boston's got some of the tools to run, and are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? He found Joe Davis, and Joe Davis just made the most acrobatic catch in this world for that thing. Look at that wobbler, and look at that Spider-Man leap. Oh man, it's poetic. Younger brother can now share something special with his older brother, a touchdown pass. Now that the senior day tradition is complete, Zach Miller is out here to finish off his senior day at the helm, and he's got his boys rolling. Having a productive day out here. He wants to make it better and that interception just snuck up on us. All in all, no harm, no foul in my book. We're gonna go for it here on fourth and inches and convert. Buying our guy here an extra set of downs. That is exactly what the doctor ordered and he'll just take it in. Closing this game out, what a learning opportunity it has been for the backups all year long. Senior day was sweet, but a Big 12 title's even sweeter. We started Big 12 conference play with Kansas Jayhawks and look who's back to meet us in the championship game. Time to put it all on the line. It's the Big 12 championship game. Jayhawks, Salona Beach, right here in San Diego. TCU gave us a little run for our money, but this has been a predictable 12-0 season thus far. Looking to make it 13-0. Our shot caller here looking to stay in the Heisman race with a big game. The mission is to come out and play his heart out as Landry with the burners. He's out of here. Touchdown, Salona Beach. My goodness. That's how you kick off the Big 12 Championship with some fireworks. And we're playing hard to defend our national championship, to defend our one seed. It's all on the line, man. Everything has been personal this year. Back on the attack. Interested to see if we have as much ease as the last drive. And this is going to be a contested ball. Yeah, floated up there too long in the wrong spot. If we can clean that up, we'll be golden. And I'm wondering if that's going to affect his... Heisman campaign as we just throw another one. And here they come past midfield. Can't escape this hungry defensive line. Tim Hawley got that one and Chad Slasher had the first one. So two senior defensive ends. This game has been very sloppy and ugly on our end here. We are not doing justice to what we've done all season long. And I'm confused. Barely just past 200 passing yards. It's honestly confusing like what is going on we need a tune-up before the big game yet we're in jeopardy of losing the championship but i think with these final plays on this drive we're finishing it off talk about a head scratcher of a game today i hope we didn't shoot our heisman opportunities based on this performance maybe i can convince the committee with this last touchdown to stone boston there we hold on in the big game here not sure why that salona beach was doing the gator clap but hey I'm not going to say nothing. They're celebrating, having a good time. We've won two Big 12 championships since joining last year, and we're headed to the big game, looking for a three-peat, our fourth appearance in a row, but looking for the three-peat. It's always a good day when you host up the Big 12 trophy. Philip Rivers, man, is racking up the hardware, bringing this school a lot of money and a lot of 
pride. No way. Salona Beach, Zach Miller finishes as runner-up in the Heisman race. Adam Griffin from Oregon State had an otherworldly year. Are you serious? 2,300 rushing yards, 27 touchdowns. This man was a workhorse. Season recap, Zach Miller, the league's best passer. Cade in the top 10, not too shabby. D. Smith from Ball State, though, popped off. As we do, usually have a couple guys up here in tackles. No one really in the thick of it there in the sack race. And same could be said for interceptions. Very good season, 3,900 yards, 47 touchdown passes, 14 ints for Miller. Really, really well done. David Hall spelling in also through for five. Can't forget Stone Boston's one. 15 touchdown receptions for Stone Cold Boston. And of course, the rest of the guys contributed well. 24 TFLs and seven sacks for Adrian Young. I'm surprised I don't see any interceptions from Gabe Smith. The man led the team last year. Zach Miller was, however, a unanimous first team All-American. And so was Stone Boston. Throw in half the defense, why don't you? Chad Slasher, Adrian Young, Trent Christian, James Reese, Jamie Stone, and David Smith. I forgot to mention the Heisman winner, Adam Griffin, with a 2,300 rushing yards is only a redshirt sophomore. Gotta shout out our second team All-Americans as well. Even freshman All-Americans cracking the list. Okay, let's go. That leads us to the big game, the moment we've all been waiting for against the Wisconsin Badgers. Looking for the three-peat. Salona Beach trying to etch their name in the history books, trying to be the best dynasty out there in the world. Here we go. We're playing at the site of the Rose Bowl national championship game wisconsin's going to be a comparable foe nothing like ohio bobcats or the byu cougars in fact i think wisconsin will be a challenge but salona beach has rose up to any challenge so far this year let the games begin it has been a 13 and 0 season it was a 13 make it 14 and 0 season last year so we're pretty much on like essentially a 27, 28 game win streak. Opening drive in the big game, all Americans littered across the field. Third and eight, looking for an open receiver. He is no good. We were asking where Gabe White has been, and well, there he was. He made the stop, but just not racking up ends this season, I guess. Second and 12, just gonna take the quick out here to Joe Davis. Now I'm gonna keep it on the ground here on a big third down, and Zach Miller is off to the races. National Championship Edition, can he go? all the way 70 yards that's quite far sir that's how you get the party started without a doubt and we're gonna try to finish it off now let's see if zach miller's still tired or if he has the sea legs underneath him to finish and yeah he does third and five bring on the badgers man it's a handoff draw mitchell just lowering the shoulder running through and as it stands they're running right through our defense to get into first and goal territory wisconsin now looking at second and goal going with a read option of their own and geez that was open third and goal i am not going to be able to plug it defense was not able to step in so back and forth we go we trade initial blows early in this one and way to stay up man and resist the blow the one seed versus the two seed it really is going to be determining who is deserving of the crown after all the blood sweat and tears in a rebuild going for a three-peat is truly the ultimate crown it signifies that you left no stone unturned no pun intended as stone boston takes the pitch and speaking of mr stone cold there he is again he got us close now now I just need Wiggins to get Wiggy with it, and he does. City Badgers down, and now I get an opportunity to go ahead and see if we can go ahead and get some more of them elusive points, and bruh, we cough it up. I think his arm got hit while throwing it. You blink and you might have missed it. That's how fast the Badgers just went on offense and got a score. And suddenly we're in jeopardy here of losing the national championship game. I don't know what it is, but the Badgers really have elevated their game. It's not like some of the other opponents we faced. I mean, shoot, when you hold Zach Miller to only 100 passing yards in the first half you're doing something right as a defense i gotta say desperately need to shake off any and all pressure and just deliver all the way down to first in goal miller finishes it off big touchdown tying this one up and when it rains believe me it pours and miller is pouring it on with the legs that's his third rushing touchdown of the day his arm hasn't been all that impressive against the secondary but he's doing it on the ground stepping up where it needs to be done and the defense does it yet again they have come through the last couple drives the grit of adrian young on that last one was admirable we're gonna reward him for going up against triple coverage and to say thank you i'm sure one of his favorite ways to accept 
is a touchdown. So we're going to give it to him. Four for four in the red zone when we've been able to get down here. And we're looking to make this a five for five in the back of the end zone. Joe Davis squeaks it in. And it's the waning minutes of the championship game. We're in clock management mode. We have the lead. Just need to kill the clock. And Stone Boston just says, let's kill the switch. And end this thing once and for all. This game was probably sealed a little while ago, but right here is the touchdown that finished off the three P. Final seconds here winding down on defense. They're not gonna get another playoff and it's G to the G. Time to celebrate again third year in a row. Honestly, I can only imagine what it would be like if you went to school during this period of time or if you just lived in the city. Like it's got to be a absolute high right now that you just never want to come down from the clouds. It's unbelievable, man. Like just winning three natties in a row, let alone one, has got to feel great. And think about this. Zach Miller was this close from being a quarterback to win four national championships in every year of his eligibility. He lost the first game, uh, remember that, in his freshman season. But he gets MVP nonetheless in this game, de well-deserved, and I could not be more proud of Salona Beach hosting up the trophy. I hope you've enjoyed, man, and soaked up the Salona Beach dynasty. We got a little exclusive bonus here for those that are sticking around. If you want to see how the next season goes, I'll give it to you here rapid fire just so you have some closure on some of your favorite players like Stone Boston, and we can tune in and see where they go, how they do, how some of the new lads step in, and what that season looks like. I mean, there's a lot of guys graduating, so probably a lot of remaining questions, and if you're still around, well, you're about to get a treat. There it is, the three in a row National Champs exclusive trophy. It exists. Zach Miller setting records out here, 15 plus 100 yards in his career, 49 touchdown passes in a single season, 143 touchdowns total in his career. Dwayne Cade, 206 receptions in his career. Add another 3,600 yards, 16 touchdowns for Stone Boston in a single season, passing up Landry. So far running away with the career touchdowns as well. Phillip Rivers is the GOAT, man. Three straight natties, five straight title game championship wins and he's 86 and 34 in his time with Salona Beach from the inception in 2013 when we could not even muster up one win only three seniors graduated and the rest are going pro that's right we got so many of them there's also three juniors trying to declare early and I gotta stop him let's sway him that the college degree is worth it and yeah he's staying Hicks as well I want to keep him around and then of course Stone Boston we need to run it back one more time. And hold up, I missed this. There's a sophomore declaring too. That is very rare to see. And we convinced him to stay as well. The NFL draft came and went, and man, it was a movie for Salona Beach alum and fans alike. Five spanking first round picks. That's right. Starting off with Zach Miller, arguably round one pick, one talent. Then you got the whole defensive line and Adrian Young, Tim Hawley, and Chad Slasher. Dwayne K, the six foot three receiver, first round talent. Jamie Stone getting a cool second round pick. Garrett Ward in the fourth round. Eli Anderson in the fifth round. And Daryl Caldwell in the seventh. Notre Dame outdid us this year on signing day we still managed to pull in the second best class training results are in and our unit is absolutely stacked once more check out guys like gabe white here up to 99 speed but dude this list is thick of talent into year 10 we got some preseason all americans stone boston greg mcintyre and trent christian landry getting his name out there on the second team list with our guy david smith the safety from wyoming as promised for the salona beach faithful i give you a rundown here of how year 10 goes for our guys got to make of key players that are into their senior season as well as some fresh names into the mix to pass the baton off to so i'm curious to see how the season went and i hope you're ready for some rapid fire action because this is how it went down started off 1-0 with the 42-21 victory in the battle of the beaches met a familiar foe in the battle for san diego and improved to 2-0 after a 35-0 shutout invited clemson to salona beach and the defense held at the goal line on the final drive 21-17 took the business to ku 47-16 K-State came to Salona Beach. It was a defensive game all around, 17-7 sponges. Backup Sean White pinch hit at quarterback and got it done, 37-17. Dion fears this one matchup, and this year was no different, 41-6. 7-0, yet we fall in the ranking to number 4. 0-8, Houston stood no chance in this one. Injuries forced nail biters, barely got past Cincy, 27-21. Getting really close for comfort, sponges sneak past the Red Raiders, 24-20. 10-0, and looking for number 11, David Hall returns from injury and gets it done. Finishing the season on the road, 
road against West Virginia, sponges soak up the snow and a close 35-32 victory. Perfect season in year 10 led to a Big 12 title game against Oklahoma State, and with that win, we're now three-time Big 12 title winners. The national championship, yet again, fifth appearance in a row looking for the four-peat all the experience for the underclassmen has paid off as there were no nerves in this game. In fact, trick plays were flying and Salona Beach dominated. It was a 48-21 to final and Salona Beach did it again. No one has won four undisputed back-to-back -back titles. Yale and Minnesota had three, but four, this is a first. And check out this trophy Phillip Rivers gets to add to his collection, the four in a row. If you had any questions about how this season went, well, check out the first team All-Americans. There were a lot of them, including freshmen Omar and Stan, the defensive line has been a hallmark for Salona Beach for as long as I can remember. Additionally, a couple second team All-Americans cracked the list. I see you guys. You're not forgotten. And yes, of course, freshman All-American count just as much. By the numbers, David Hall had a pretty good 21 touchdown season and Sean White filled in for 11. Wiggins with a great year on the ground, over a thousand yards and 15 touchdowns. Andrew Robinson stepped it up for nine sacks. Omar, the freshman, 22 TFLs, seven sacks. And then Stan only had three sacks but 25 TFLs. There's Gabe White bouncing back to the star DB I know. Three picks. And wow, what a fitting way to put a bow on the Salona Beach story. We cracked the 100 win threshold. Philip Rivers, congratulations, you stud. That was an incredible career. And look at the run, man. Starting in 2016 is really when the tide turned around, but 2017 and on were double digit win seasons. Six straight conference championships and four straight national championships, unheard of. And one extra cherry on top to send you all off. Look at the draft board. We had eight first round picks in this year's NFL draft. Tony Wiggins, Trent Christian, Gabe White, Blake Williams, Greg McIntyre, Joe Davis, Tim Cooper, and Stone Boston. Can't forget about second rounder Carson Bynum, third rounder Chris Hicks, third rounder David Smith, and seventh rounder Andrew Robinson. One more national championship trophy in the best draft class we've ever had in Salona Beach history, sending eight guys in the first round. That is like on average, every fourth pick in the first round was one of our guys. Such a fitting end to cap off our dynasty, man, and I hope you soaked it up, enjoyed it every moment of this. I had such a joy and pleasure to bring it to y'all. Shout out to everyone that helped make this team possible from Arrowhead, from a design perspective and Gridiron Pictures from an editing perspective. I appreciate all the support I got along the way. And if you've been soaking it up with your boy King Sponge to this point, consider hitting that subscribe button. It makes a world of a difference. And I got plenty of fresh college football bangers right around the corner, including some absolute heater new series for EA Sports College Football 25. Keep it here.